In this Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, uh, you can see that I have modeled this parametric facade in Grasshopper. And this is really similar to the Ichi renovation, which you can see here. Uh, I have made this facade based on this model. So what we want to do is to start from scratch. Let me just go to the shape. So what I want to do, I want to show you that I can easily model this in Grasshopper. You can see that I can change the height of this facade. Uh, I can change the uh, location of the point attractor by, based on the height, based on the location. And we can also change the, as you can see here, the scaling. And I have also defined a multiplication, which you can define the number of panels you want on the facade. So basically this tutorial will help you to model the parametric facade in Grasshopper, a triangular facade, easily. Okay, for those who are new to our channel and you want to know what Grasshopper is and how it works, I'm going to put a playlist up here which you can watch and enter the Grasshopper world. So let's get started. I'm going to start from scratch. And as you can see, I just draw a simple line in Rhino. So let's just do this. And we can just use the shift key to make this polyline. And we're going to use the curve from the palms menu with bifocals plugin so you can see this and set this to the curve. Okay, so what we want to do is to extrude this in the Z direction. So we can go to EX extrude and extrude this in the Z direction and give this a number. So maybe we want this 1256 and give this to the extrusion. So you can see that we can control the extrusion. And remember that we can always update this by moving the control points and uh, changing the extrusion. Okay, the next part is, so if we go to the Launchbox plugin, let me just open this, uh, you can see that we have a panel and we can make triangle panels B. So let's just connect this. And if I connect this to the extrude surface, you can see it's going to show an error. And it says that data conversion failed from B rep to surface. The problem here is that this poly surface is two surfaces. So before we want to make those panels, we have to go to the surface and deconstruct that poly surface. And now we have two surfaces here. Okay. So if we want to work with this, first of all, you can see that those triangle panels are up and down. But for this facade, you can see that it's in left and right. So what we want to do is to change the direction. And you can simply do that by going to the Launchbox plugin, Utility, and using this, let me just zoom in, Reverse Surface Direction. We have talked about this in several tutorials. So what we want to do is to reverse the surface direction of these. And the reverse option is basically the three reverse UV, okay? So let's just give this a three and give this to the surface. And now you can see that it's going to be left and right. The next problem we have here is that the UV division is going to divide the surface for both of those surfaces to the same number. So if I give this a number for 5, you can see that it's changing the U division for both of those surfaces. Okay, so we can fix this problem by uh, inspecting the length and the dimension of the surface. And so I'm going to type dimension and find the dimensions of the surface. These numbers, you can see that the U is basically one of the ways of the directions of the surface. So you can see that this is 73 and that's 27. So we want to use these numbers to form our division. Assume that I just multiply that by 0 0.1, maybe. It's saying that we want 7 division and 2 division, right? Or 3 divisions. So we can go to math and multiply that with a number smaller than 1. And if I give this to the U division, you can see that this is dividing the U direction of this. Okay, based uh, of this number, we're going to divide the same V division by the same multiplication. So if I give this to the V division, and remember you have to change this, one of those multiplications will 
form a complete intersection of panels. You can see that with this one, we don't have a complete tessellation, but with this one, we have it. So remember, you have to change those numbers and produce a complete tessellation. And you can see that the division is uh, something uh, based on the U and the V division of the both surfaces. And it's going to help you to use this technique to form the panels. So the next part is to use a control point, uh, a point attractor, which we have talked about this. I'm going to put one of the tutorials up here, which you can watch if you want to know more about attractors, which I'm going to start now. And if you want an advanced tutorial, we have a complete section for attractors on our course. You can check it in the description bar. So what I want to do is to find the centroid of this or simply just type area, which will find the area centroid of these panels. And again, what we want to do is to not fall in the group section of this. And because we need a remap, for now on, we're going to flatten all of the panels so they are in the same group. So remember, we have to flatten this because you can see that they are in two groups, which is this surface and the surface here, right here. So we have two groups. So if you don't know what flatten or graft is, again, I'm going to put another tutorial up here. You can check out the tutorial which we talked about flatten graft and simplify. Okay, so now we want to move the point attractor on this edge. So I want to go here and go to the curve section and use this point on curve tool. This is a simple tool you can connect to a curve. And if I just make this a bigger one, you can see that we can move this from zero, which is from the start of the curve to one, which is the end of the curve. OK, so this is one of the parameters we want to use. And then what we want to do is to move that in the Z direction. OK, we know that the height of this is 50, right? So we have this height for the z direction, what we want to do is to multiply that with a number between 0 and 1. So that's we are saying that we want a percentage of the height. So again, I'm going to go to the multiplication and multiply that by number smaller than 1 and give this to the z. So you can see that we can move this from 0 on the ground to the top. So we can use these two. Uh, parameters to define the location of the point attractor. So here we have the point attractor. And for those tutorials, we have talked about the point attractor. We have a grid of points. We have a point attractor. And what we used was a CP. We talked about this. Again, you can watch the tutorials for the attractor. Closest point, not closest points. Remember, we didn't use this one. So closest point. And we talked about this, so I'm not going to explain it again. And we connected the grid to the points and the attractors to the cloud. And that is because those points of the center are going to search for the attractor uh, near to that. So you can also add multiple attractors here. OK, so after doing that, let's just turn this off. We can go to the launch box and use this. Uh, panel frame to frame the panels. Okay, this is going to be a little bit slow because paneling and producing the surface is a little bit slow. But in this example, which I opened here, I guess that we have to set this again to this curve. Just as quick tip, you can also use scale if you want to make it fast. So remember, this is a really fast one because I'm scaling the curves and nothing else. But for this tutorial, which you can see, I have used the panel frame. We are producing the surface. Let's just bake this one. We are producing the surface, and that's going to take a while. So remember, if you want to uh, manage to change the location of the point attractor, check it out, see what is the best, uh, you can use the scale. But for now, we can use the panel frame. We want the final results. And you know that the scale factor is between 0 and 1. That means a scale between 0 and 1. So what we have to do is to remap this distance. So we have the distance between these centers to this attractor point. And now maybe it's maybe, let's just go to the blue. OK. So maybe you can see it here. I guess that we have to write here. OK. So maybe this is 250 meters for the distance. Something I'm, I'm just giving you numbers, OK? We can't use this for 
scale. So what we want to do is to scale this between 0 and 1. So we use the remap again. You can download the remap tool from our website. So what I want to do is to remap this. You can always also download the remap from, uh, let's just type this for those who don't know, parametric2d.com backslash en and backslash remap. So you can always go to this address and download the remap. So again, we can just type 0 0.25 and number for the maximum. That will scale those distances, which you can see it's maybe 18, 15, 6, and 1 into this domain, which we want to give this to the scale factor. So this is now producing the scale. Let's just turn this off and connect the surface to the frame only so we can see the frame you can see that this point attractor is near we have 0 0.25 and the far uh, panels are 0 0.73 so what we want to do is also we can just reverse the minimum and the maximum and you can see that this point will just make this bigger and again you can move the location This is a little bit slow. If I use the scale, it was really fast. And again, I can change the height. So remember that you have to understand what is, uh, as a geometry, a fast producing geometry or a slow one. So curves are fast. Surfaces, especially for lofting surfaces, are slow. And now we can just bake this into layer 1 and bake the panels if we want to layer 2. And here we go. We can just simply close that one. And we have this facade, which you can see. We can just turn this off so you can see it. Let's just go to the rendered section so you can see these panels. So this is the way you can use Grasshopper to produce a parametric facade easily by using the Launchbox plugin. And you can see that it's going to make small. If you want to make something similar to this, as you can see here, we have a wave coming here and then it ends. I guess you have to watch the tutorial for the point attractor from our course because we have talked about graphs or you can also watch the graph mapper tutorial which I will put up here for those who want to know more about graph mapper but for those who want to work with point attractor we have a similar example to this in our course okay thank you for watching hit the like button comments below what do you think about this video was it easy was it hard your feedback is really appreciated and see you next time